Hello pre-calculus students. So we're, we are continuing our work here with parametric equations and we have an example here with a kind of a serious or dramatic example here with a car that's driving off a cliff. So it says that a, a car drives off a cliff that's 500 feet and the speed that the car drives off the cliff is 15 feet per second. And so our first uh, question here, which is number nine on the worksheet, we want to write an equation for the horizontal movement of the car. So before we get going too far here, I'm just going to start out with a picture of the situation here. So you got this uh, cliff, and that's 500 feet. And you got a car up here. And it flies off this cliff at a speed of 15 feet per second. And we want to know uh, the horizontal movement of the car. So in this case, it would just simply be that it's going forward at 15 feet per second. So x is equal to 15 times t. Okay. So x here represents the uh, horizontal position of the car in feet. Okay. And t here is time in seconds. Okay. So I'm just going to, let me just write this uh, in this little box right here, which is also the cliff. Okay, so x is the position from the cliff. t is time, and this is in seconds. And we're also going to use another variable called y, which is the height uh, from the ground. And this is also measured in feet. This is measured in feet. Okay. Okay, now, number 10 here says that um, we want to find the, an equation for the vertical movement of the car. And we're going to use this free fall equation, y equals negative 16t squared plus v sub 0t plus s sub 0. And so for number 10, um, this is kind of review from physics, and that's really where the, that equation comes from. But in this case, um, negative 16t squared, this is the uh, force of gravity. And this is something that's derived in, uh, in physics. Um, v sub 0 is the initial velocity. And S sub 0 is the initial position. Okay. So my equation for number 10 here the vertical movement of the car is just y equals negative 16 t squared. Now, if a car starts falling straight down, the initial velocity is zero because it's not initially it's not falling down already. It's uh, it starts at a at a speed of zero and it starts falling down. So we can ignore uh, this middle term here, v sub zero times t, and just add the initial position, and in this case, it's 500, since it's 500 feet off the ground. Okay. And so maybe it helps at this point uh, to set this up as a graph, and we're going to use this cliff right here, the point where the car is at, and we're going to let the x-axis um, is going to be uh, the ground. Okay. So this is y up here, and this is x down here. And so number, um, number 11 here is asking us to draw a graph of the path of the car between t equals 0 and t equals 5. So let me just readjust this a little bit, and then we'll, we'll continue with the example. Okay, so uh, before I graph anything for number 11 here, um, I'm going to need to make a table. And that's, this table is going to have uh, three different values. So t x and y. Okay, I'm going to cover this up here. So I'm trying to graph the position of the car and it's going to go between t is less than or equal to 0 and t is less than t is greater than or equal to 0 and t is less than or equal to 5. So just literally entering in uh, times here from, from 0 to 5 
and then uh, just for each one of these t values I'm going to substitute t substitute that value in here for t for x and for y and then just fill out this table here so at t equals 0 x is 0 and y is at 500 so in other words right before the car starts falling is right up there x is 0 uh, y is 500 when t is at 1 uh, x is at 15 and y is well I have to substitute 1 in here and that's going to give me uh, 484 feet okay so let me um, just pause here for a moment I am going to label the, the, the axes so that we can uh, get a better image of what's going on here so 115 So this is a 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. And along here, we're going to go in, in hundreds here. So 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 up here. So I'm going to erase this, some of these marks here that I, some of this information that I wrote in earlier, just so I have enough room to write. So this is at 100, 200, 300, 400, and then 500 at the top. And now I can complete the rest of my table. So when t is 2, x is going to be uh, 30. When t is 3, x is 45. When t is 4, x is 60. When t is 5, x is 75. Okay. And then similarly, I'm going to substitute t in here several times. and to fill out the rest of this table. So when t is 2, this is going to be uh, 4 times negative 16 plus 500. That's going to be 64, so this gives me 436. Uh, 356, 244, and finally when t is 5, y is going to be 100. And then I'm going to take these points and plot them on the graph. So I already got one here for t is equal to 0. Uh, 15, 484, so approximately here. 30, 436. Oops. Right about there. 45, 356. 62, 44. And finally, 75, 100. Let me remove some of these other things. This, this uh, board here is getting a little bit cluttered. So we can connect all of these points together. And that gives us a pretty good picture uh, for the position of the car as it's falling off the cliff. So this is t equals 1, t equals 2 t equals 3, t equals 4. Oops, sorry, that seems like a, I've missed one here. So 45, 15, 44 should be up here. So this is t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals Three t equals four, and finally t equals five is this point right here. Okay, so this graph right here, uh, it's a little, it's a little bit crude, but it gives us a pretty good idea of what's happening to this car. So the car's flying straight off the cliff, and it's, it keeps on moving forward, but at the same time, gravity's pulling on it, so it's going downwards. Okay, and that um, that answers the question about drawing a graph of the car. Okay. So let me just uh, revisit what we're at right here. Draw a graph of the path of the car between t equals 0 and t equals 5. Okay. Now number 12 is asking us how, f how long will it take for the car to hit the ground? Okay, so how long will it take before this car hits the ground? And here I just want to point your attention to a very basic uh, equation here which is the equation for y so we want to know how long will it take for the y value to be zero because when it hits the ground uh, y is going to be equal to zero 
So with that in mind, um, we can now do a little bit of algebra using this equation. Okay, so hitting the ground. that occurs when y is equal to zero. So we're gonna set this equation equal to zero and then solve it for t. 500, subtract 500 from both sides. Negative 16t squared equals negative 500. This comes out to 31.25, that's equal to t squared. And we're gonna take the square root of both sides and that will give us t's approximately 5.59 seconds. Okay. So that's how long it's going to take for the car to uh, hit the ground. Okay, so it's free falling. Um, that's roughly how long it takes for the car to hit the ground. Okay, let's move on here. So now we, the question is, the next question asks us, uh, how far from the base of the cliff is the car after it hits the ground? So in other words, if we continue this path that the car is uh, currently f going on, so we continue this path, we can see that at some point it's going to hit the ground, and we know this point here, th where it hits the ground, that is 5.59 seconds, okay? So that's, that's where it hits the ground. But now we want to know how far is it from the base of the cliff. So we're going to take this value for time and substitute it into the equation for x because x represents the distance, the horizontal distance from the base of the cliff. Okay. So we know that this is how long it takes it to hit the ground. Uh, now we want to find uh, distance from the cliff. So we just substitute in 5.59 into the x equation. And if you recall, the x equation is x equals 15t. That means x is approximately 83.85 feet. So that means when the car has hit the ground, uh, this distance here is about uh, 83.85 feet, and that occurred, occurs after 5.59 seconds since the car started falling off the cliff or since the car drove off the cliff. And finally, number 14 asks us, eliminate the time parameter and write an equation for the path of the car using only x and y. So we have three variables here, x, t, and y. And we can use this, uh, you, you know, this parameter t to set up these pairs of uh, set parametric equations and draw the path. But maybe there's a way to do this without using t now that we have all this information. Okay, so we want to eliminate t altogether and somehow get an equation that only uses x and y. Okay, so I got these two equations. It's x equals 15t, y equals negative 16t squared plus 500. And I want to rewrite this using only x and y. In other words, just uh, eliminating the variable t. Okay? So what I'm going to do first is solve for t. So solve for t in terms of x. Okay, so take this first equation here and just solve it for t. So x equals 15t. That means x over 15 equals t. Okay, done. Next, what we want to do is replace or substitute um, t into equation for y. to the equation for y, okay? So I got y equals negative 16t squared plus 500, and I just wanna, and I just wanna take this expression and substitute it in here for t, since x plus, since x over 15 equals t. So now I get y equals 
negative 16 times x over 15 squared plus 500. And this gives me y equals negative 16 x squared divided by 225 plus 500. And that is the function equation that uses only x and y and does not use t. Okay. And so from all of this, um, what I'm going to do next in, this, the, in the next video is showing you how all of these can be done on the graphing calculator and how all of these uh, functions and, and parametric form is really related.